Our objectives on the clinical front are to have uh, clinics available by certainly in the near term of the United States, meaning as a matter of months. And also on the R&D side, people with depression related disorders, they can't wait five years. They can't wait three years. We need them now. Dr. Roger McIntyre joins me now. He's CEO of Braxia Scientific Corp. Trades on the CSE under the symbol B-R-A-X and in the United States under the symbol B-R-A-X-F. Roger, welcome. Great to be with you. You bet. Roger, let's start with an overview. What is the business of Braxia Scientific Corp? The business of Braxia Scientific Corp could be really distilled down into two components, both equal priority for me and the company. First, provide access to state-of-the-art, innovative, psychedelic-based treatments. And secondly, to engage in R&D, R&D that aims to provide the next generation of psychedelic-based treatments. And you want to know what is so interesting about this area? As a person who's been in the space for 25 years, I have never, I have never seen so much ambition and enthusiasm for a space than the psychedelic space now we're witnessing in psychiatry. But along with ambition, you know what else we need? We need thought leadership. And we need the experience on doing the clinics at scale and doing the R&D in partnership with Big Pharma. So Braxia has two co-primary objectives. It brings a tremendous amount of ambition, which the space is really resonating with. But unlike what I'm seeing out there, we have this tremendous thought leadership and tremendous experience in the field. That's why I'm extremely confident that we're going to be very successful what we're trying to do. Sure. Okay. So then... You operate clinics around the world to uh, provide psychedelic research? We sure do. And we were the first clinic in Canada to offer intravenous-based ketamine. I wanted to start off with that because the psychedelic tent is one that's gotten quite large. It includes ketamine, but also the more sort of psilocybin-type derivatives, as well as MDMA or so-called ecstasy. And we were the first ones to not only start a clinic, but also to grow the clinic. Sorry, we just reported financials, and within a year, this last year, we'd actually increase profit in this clinic, uh, you know, eighty percent growth in, in, in our in our in our in our financial over the last, I could say, in a year, really close to six to nine months, quite frankly. So things are not just rolling out for us with four clinics already in Canada with a U.S. expansion plan. But we're also, in fact, now engaging and now moving things along in our R&D side. And by the way, what's important to emphasize about Braxia is I've been in the R&D area, the research and development area for drug discovery and development in psychiatry for close to 25 years now. And we are using our partnerships with large pharma, not only as uh, ongoing you know, professional collegial relationships, but also to guide our near-term objectives. This is why we've been focused especially on ketamine in the near term. And we're using our clinics not only as a place for people to receive best practices treatments, but also as a place where we can conduct our own research. In other words, we've taken out the intermediary and there's a tremendous emphasis on quality. And this is a point I wanna strongly state because we know that people need these new treatments, but they need these new treatments guided by best practices. Just within the last four months, we've published the world's first international guideline on a psychedelic, that being ketamine in the American Journal of Psychiatry with five continents represented. And why I want to put a fine point on that is, is because people with depression and related conditions, they don't uh, only need access to these treatments, they need access to quality care. And the quality proposition, both on the clinical front and on the R&D front, is that's instantiated by these guidelines that we've now published, but also it's, I think, really highlighted by our relationships with large pharma. Mm -hmm. So that intrigues me to no end. I mean, the, to, see, to, to be in this era where we're talking about psilocybin and ketamine and ecstasy and all these, what used to be, you know, recreational club drugs, which nonetheless had a profound effect on the formative mental development of people of that era, um, to the point where, you know, as I often say, I credit my general sunny disposition to a healthy experimentation across the full psychedelic realm when I was younger. My, uh, my clinic was a club and my, uh, my range of, you know, experiments included essentially all the psychedelics. And, uh, you know, I, it was intriguing to me because 
there was never a risk of addiction to the psychedelics because they very much impart an experience and it's not an experience you want to be immersed in all the time by any stretch of the imagination. It's more like a, an amusement park you go visit that has some special lessons for you. So I'm curious though, as to how do you compare the dosages that were representative of the psychedelic era of psychopilot exploration versus the clinical environment? Are the doses smaller and is the effect then a little bit less intense? Well, you know, I think the frank answer is to be determined, but what I really like about, well, first of all, very interesting testimonial, so thank you for that, but what I really liked about the way you set that up is that I think we need to really divide the world into two. That is psychedelics for medical purpose and psychedelics for recreational or otherwise purpose. Braxia Scientific is focused on psychedelic development for medical purpose. And you're touching on a really key question, and that is, what is the therapeutic? What's the safe dose? And that will only be arrived at through careful empirical research conducting rigorous clinical trials, which is what we are doing at our centers. Now, my instinct is telling me that the dose will not be the same as what's used recreational and so on. That's my instinct. My instincts often serve me well. Uh, but we're going to find out, and it's really, really important, I think, to hammer this point home, that placebo, when we give placebo in a placebo-controlled trial, which we have to agree is an inert substance, about 60 to 70 percent of people get side effects on placebo, which is amazing. So everything has side effects, including placebo, and everything has safety concerns, including placebo. So we not only want to find the dose that gets people out of this terrible uh, agony they're in with depression or related conditions, we want to do it safely in a way that's well tolerated. And that's about threading the needle on getting that dose right. And we are going to arrive at that through our clinical trials that we're going to be doing intramurally or in our own clinics across North America. Okay, wow, that's, that sounds really exciting to me. Um, so then what's the, uh, what's the sort of the rollout in the time frame until these clinics are available to say, for example, I've, I've been going through a hard time. I feel like I've got a, a level of depression or anxiety. I want to call a clinic and get involved in one of these, uh, you know, therapies. How soon till that's mainstream? Well, it's now. So in oh. Canada, we have four clinics uh, and uh, we these clinics are up and operating and, and active and busy. Uh, as we speak, we are uh, in, in, frankly, late stage discussions with several groups in the United States. And we plan to make some announcements, hopefully very soon, regarding our U.S. footprint, because this company, Braxia Scientific, is a company that aims to uh, operate up to 50 clinics across the United States. And there clearly is a national health concern with mental illness. We've been hearing not only about depression and the skyrocketing rates with COVID-19, but also in anxiety, post-traumatic stress, the opioid epidemic has gone the wrong way the last two years. And the list goes on. We didn't need COVID-19 to press this point that we need better innovative and near-term treatments for people with mental illness. But COVID has just really amplified this point. In fact, COVID has really just issued a clarion call. We need it now. So our, our objectives on the clinical front are to have uh, clinics available by certainly in the near term in the United States, meaning is a matter of months. And also on the R&D side, people with depression related disorders, they can't wait five years. They can't wait three years. We need them now. So we are in fact uh, developing treatments with a view that we need to have an IP line of sight. We're doing this in conversation and dialogue with large pharma, but we're also being thoughtful. We're being thoughtful not only pharmacologically, what are the agents that we're looking at, but also thoughtful in the sense, what has the shortest runway to get from the human trials to getting into the clinics? And there's a way that we can do that that's now been provided by this, this, this new generation of psychedelics. Frankly, we have a luxury and we're unique in this way in the sense that we've been doing this for 20 odd years and we have significant human capital on the research front. So we don't need to outsource this which gives us a, a unique perspective, gives us obviously an edge, but also I think gives us a reason to believe. It's always easier to believe what's believable. And we have a reason to believe that we can get this done within the next year and a half with on the R&D side. And then that type of product development will then be acquired by a large pharmaceutical company. Wow, fantastic. Uh, I see even the Canadian government has uh, awarded you some capital to pursue the research in ketamine 
Um, yeah. Tell me about how the how is it that the government is actually now financing this research? Well, it's a really good point. You know, I, I think that it's one thing to have a, a bold vision, a thoughtful vision, and a, a vision that really doesn't lose its focus on who the who the, the stakeholder is here. And our view is this is the ultimate, frankly, in stakeholder capitalism because we're treating an imperative mental illness, and it's also. Uh, really an approach that's going to be very, uh, you know, very uh, successful from a business perspective. Um, it's a very rare circumstance when the federal government recognizes the bona fides, the expertise of a private organization and uh, awards research. And in this case, research monies were awarded that included that included the CRTC, which is one of our uh, key clinic uh, centers as part of Braxy. So the Braxy clinics are part of that. And we've got a couple of research studies that are involved in that. The second part around that is, and again, I, I mentioned a moment ago, we published our clinical practice guidelines. And, and it, it, I think that just speaks to the recognition of who we are and not just across North America, but internationally. And third and finally, when you look at uh, you know, one's record, I mean, one of the famous NFL coaches said, you are what your record says you are. And our record is one where, according to Expertscape, uh, I have the leading uh, uh, you know, name in the world in depression research. I don't take that as a, uh, a narcissistic sort of uh, validation. I see that as, a, as an honor and a privilege and a, and a responsibility. And that type of bona fide is what we really put in action with the research we have. And frankly, that's in large part why I've maintained the robust relationships with large pharma who are working closely with us and discussing matters with us as we refine our R&D pathway. Wow, fascinating, Roger. That's a great story. I'm going to uh, pursue more research on this, and we're going to have you back just as soon as makes sense. But uh, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You bet. Bye for now.